What is up, guys? Welcome back for week two of the NPL Miners. This week we are taking on Keegan or Fog or Foghorn Channel and the Colorado Avalugs. Uh, let's go over his team real quick. He's got Cartana, Infernape, Cresselia, Mega Pinsir, Amoongus, Rotom Wash, Kirim, regular Kirim. Of course, we have Kirim Black, uh, Klefki, Chansey, The Blade, Alakazam, and Armaldo. So. Looking at his team, he's got a couple of really annoying offensive threats in Cartana, Mega Pinsir, Kirim, uh, even Infernape to some extent. Definitely annoying. Uh, even I, I would even go as far as saying Alakazam. Uh, and then on the defensive side, he's got things that wall my team pretty well, such as Chansey, Klefki, uh, The Blade does a pretty good job as well. Amoongus, uh, Rotom Wash to some extent, Cresselia is annoying. So, very annoying team. Now, before we get into the team builder, something happened uh, during this game and we had to play this game twice guys the first time we played this game um we made it to about turn 60 i think it was we were really far into the game and we were probably coming up to about the last seven turns and the server that we were playing on crashed without a replay without a game to go back to without either one of us having recorded so that we could recreate the battle we were stuck without knowing what to do and the game wasn't 100% won for either player so it was a really tough situation and we spoke to the commissioner of the league and we ultimately decided that the best course of action was to have another game remake our teams uh, we could bring the same ones if we wanted to but obviously we knew each other's sets for the most part seeing as we were so far into the battle and um, and it was it was impossible to recreate because there were a lot there was a lot of hacks that happened during the battle uh, on both ends and uh, a little bit more on mine. But anyway, the team that he originally brought for me was Infernape, Cresselia, Mega Pinsir, Rotom Wash, Klefki, and The Blade. Those six. So this is more or less the team that I brought for him. Uh, let's let's go over this. And I'll tell you what the changes that I made were from game one to game two. So this Vaporeon right here, as you can see, is a very standard Vaporeon set. It's got Scald, Wish, Protect, and Baton Pass. There are a lot of things that do not want to stay in on Vaporeon, and Baton Pass gives me a lot of great momentum into my, into my offense, uh, such as uh, OG Hypnotoad, which is our Acelgor. We have Mega Deancey, and we have Kirim. So it was very useful for me to have Baton Pass this game. I felt that it was a lot more necessary than Heal Bell. Um, you guys will see why that's not necessarily true later, but um, originally this Vaporeon had 24 speed uh, because I was trying to speed creep anything that was trying to speed creep me. Uh, so that's why I had that 24 speed. But in our first game, his Inferni proved to be a little bit of a nuisance to my team as it was Life Orb. And I didn't originally have Kirim, guys. I had Flygon, and I'll explain the differences between the sets after. But... Um, I decided to pour uh, that 24 EVs back into defense just to make sure that I could take hits a little bit better. Uh, and that does play a role in our second game. So this is my Vaporeon. Very simple, very standard. It's able to pass wishes into things like uh, Rotom, which in our first game mattered a lot because he set up twice with his The Blade. He went for two swords dances. And I was able to knock that thing out from the range that it was at. Uh, it was already knocked off, so it didn't have its EV light anymore. Rotom Heat came in, lived the Shadow Sneak, took it no problem. Uh, and was able to overheat uh, but wish is just really good uh, in this matchup overall so I decided to bring Vaporeon of course Vaporeon is there for the Infernape mainly it can also wall the pincer and originally also Scald was Ice Beam and because I saw the Infernape I knew that I needed Scald on this set so I ultimately switched it out our next set is probably one of the most annoying things to his team and it is a Selgor the only difference with this set um, right here and the one that I ended up bringing this should actually be 373 uh, I don't know why it dropped down to 372 but anyway um, the only difference between this set and the one that I brought in game one was that hidden power rock was u-turn but with the team that he brought as you saw um, mega pincer infernape uh, Rotom wash Klefki, the blade those don't care about u-turn at all they it doesn't really gain me a lot of great momentum, and Acelgor is only forcing out Cresselia on that team. And even at that, it, it, it can potentially not even be able to force out Cresselia. So, I ultimately decided that if I can keep my Focus Sash intact, which I was able to do uh, for the majority of the first game, 
then Hidden Power Rock might be a good idea because I can outspeed the Mega Pinsir, and after Rocks, after Mega Evolution, I can knock it out with a Hidden Power Rock, no problem. A max special attack, Rash Nature, minus Spadef because I also have knockoff and I wanted to do as much damage as possible uh, to increase my chances at rolls later on in the game, especially on his EV Light Mons, uh, those being the Blade and Chansey. Uh, and the 192 speed, uh, as you can see, it, it wasn't 192 just now, but it should have been, uh, was for Alakazam, just so that I could outspeed it, putting me at 373, so enough to outspeed that. And uh, that's pretty much our Acel Gore. It's very simple. A 2 it KOs Cresselia after rocks with Bug Buzz 100% of the time, uh, unless it's, it's got some Spadef investment, which I was expecting a Max Fizz Def variant. So uh, this Bug Buzz was very useful. Also could knock out Cartana from full. Um, no matter what, even max HP dies instantly. So yeah, that's uh, that's why I brought a Selgor this game. I felt that it had a really good good matchup. Uh, you guys didn't get to see it in the last game. So there's actually three Pokemon in this team that you didn't get to see uh, in the last game that are coming. Uh, maybe even four. Uh, no, I think it's three. It's three. Everything everything on my team has come at least once, except for Tornadus. So this is really fun. Uh, next up, we have he Heavy Metal Pokemon, which is the Delmize. I'm not sure if I brought this game one. I don't think I did. Can't remember now, but. We're bringing Delmize, uh, max attack adamant, max HP, 8 defense investment. Uh, we've got Shadow Claw on there is to wear down the Cresselia and to uh, catch things on Switch, like the Blade. Uh, it does a lot of damage to his team. Anchor Shot is to be able to uh, force anything to stay in. Hidden Power Fire was to catch the Cartana on the Switch, because otherwise Cartana is a pretty good switch into Delmize. And uh, Rapid Spin was to make sure that he couldn't keep up hazards. He does have a Clef Key. He's got a good hazards, uh, hazard setters in Clef Key and Chansey. Uh, and as well as Infernape is a great rock setter as well. So I wanted to make sure to keep hazards off my side, especially for my focus sash, and because I have two mons that are extremely weak to rock back here, uh, as well as the cell goers. So that was the Delmize set. Put in a lot of work on his team, as long as I was able to keep it alive. So next up we have Pokerob the Mega Deancey. This was my win con, guys. And the set you're seeing on your screen is my original set from the first game. This is what I had initially brought. And for the most part, I wanted to keep my, my team the, the, the same. The only Mon that didn't really put in a lot of work was Flygon. So I decided to swap it out for Kiram because I knew that Kiram could put in a lot of pressure on his team. Um, but being as I didn't have Flygon anymore, and that I had Kiram, and Kiram served a certain purpose, I didn't need Earth Power as much anymore. Nor did I need Diamond Storm because, in fact, Moonblast has a very good chance to knock out Mega Pinsir after Rocks. If I'm max special attack, which I ended up being. The rest went into defense. And then, I figured, well, I still need something to hit the Klefki, but the Klefki ran Magnet Rise in our first game. And I need something to hit the Blade. If I could have something to hit the Cartana as well, that's fantastic. So I en ended up going with Hidden Power Fire on Mega Deancey as well. I needed one more move, but I I just... No, only one move was calling out to me, and that was Calm Mind. And I knew that if I could set up a Calm Mind at some point in the game, if Cresselia was weakened enough, I could sweep straight through his team. Very easily. So, as long as the Amoongus wasn't something that was there, uh, things like that. So, yeah. This is uh, this is the Deancey set that I ended up going with instead of the one you guys saw a few seconds ago. And we'll see how that plays out. Next up, like I said, I decided to switch out Flygon. Flygon was a Dragon Dance set with uh, Furium Z, Inferno Overdrive. Uh, with Flamethrower to be able to deal with his, uh, an Eviolite, the Blade, a Clef Key, which would go for Magnet Rise. Basically, I could deal with all those things. The only thing that was a problem to, um, to Flygon was Rotom Wash and Cresselia. Because Cresselia had Ice Beam in our first game, and Rotom Wash could just Will-O-Wisp me. And that was bad. So, I decided to bring this Kiram instead. This Kiram is max special attack modest, 252 speed up because I do not need speed against this team. If you see, the only things that I'm slower than are his Mega Pinsir, Infernape, and Cartana, and I'm always slower than those if they're max speed anyway, so it doesn't matter. I don't need speed. Everything else on his team that comes as a defensive Pokemon, I will outspeed. So, it really doesn't matter. His own Kyurem was the only thing, but I didn't think that thing was coming. It did not have a good matchup against me at all, so I decided... Let's go with no speed. Let's go 56 HP because this puts me at 405. Uh, specifically, this allows me to, with this Spadef investment, it allows me to potentially take a Moonblast from a non-boosted Cresselia and not break my sub, which was extremely important to me. 
uh, Ice Beam was there so that I could actually hit the Mega Pinsir, uh, the Kartana, the uh, Amoongus as well. And uh, Earth Power was there for everything else. Earth Power does really well against this team if you if you look at it. Uh, Kartana doesn't want to take one. Infernape almost drops, uh, especially with a max uh, or 192 modest uh, nature. Uh, Rotom Wash is hit because of Terra Volt. Uh, Klefki doesn't want to take it. The Blade doesn't want to take it. The only real answer to this is Chansey. And that's why I have Sub Toxic because Chansey can't break my sub with uh, Seismic Toss because I'm 405 HP. And, <coughs> excuse me. And Toxic could gradually wear it down. Now, the problem with this Kiram is it was specifically specifically here for Cresselia so that I could Toxic it and just uh, start hitting it with Earth Power and then switch out it into Rotom Heat if necessary. Uh, if it was rocking only Moonblast or Moonblast Ice Beam like it was in the first game. I really uh, took a lot of his sets from the first game and put them into, uh, into a, a probable uh, situation of coming again. So, because we both didn't have a lot of time to recreate teams, and I decided that my team was already pretty good. The only mods that I really modified were the Vaporeon, uh, one move on the Acel Gore, uh, the Deancey's full move set, and then I switched out Flygon for Kiram Black. So I knew that I could deal with the Chansey to some extent, except if it was Aromatherapy. That was the only set that really shut me down. So. Uh, for the most part, this Kiram can put in a lot of work, a lot more than Flygon could. Uh, it can come on, uh, come in on the Rotom quite safely. It doesn't mind getting burned by Will-O-Wisp, except that it loses its leftovers recovery, essentially. So it is a really good check to his Rotom Wash, and that's something that I needed because that thing was a huge nuisance in our first game. That, along with Infernic, because he was just Volt turning on me all day. Uh, and then our last Mon is probably the most important Mon against this team, which is Chartyberry Rotom Heat. I absolutely needed this because I needed to make sure that I could check his Infernape, and his Mega Pinsir decently well, as well as his Kartana. Uh, but specifically Pinsir and Infernape, because both of those get Stone Edge, and I wanted to be able to live the Stone Edge and hit them back really hard uh, with either a Volt Switch on his uh, Infernape and get me into Mega Deancey, or Overheat on his Pinsir and knock it out. Even Volt Switch after its Mega Evolved does a lot. Uh, Pain Split was here, along with Toxic. Once again, another Toxic Mon, just so that I could 1v1 the Chansey again. Uh, to make sure that it couldn't beat me, as long as it wasn't Aromatherapy, or Toxic itself. So, uh, this Rotom puts in a lot of work, again, it catches switches with Toxic very well, uh, his Steel types don't really want to switch in on Rotom Heat, so he pretty much has to take a Toxic. Uh, I feel that Rotom Heat runs Toxic a lot better than Rotom Wash does, just because some Steel types can come in on Rotom Wash, whereas Rotom Heat, there aren't almost any Steel types that come in on Rotom Heat, so, uh, this, uh, this set, it was uh, in our first game. It was a big, big problem for uh, Keegan for Fog, and I knew he would somewhat switch up his team to be able to deal with it, but I wasn't sure how yet. So let's get into the game, and I'll give you guys a play-by-play. -play. It's a pretty long game, so please bear with me. I'm gonna try to speed it up through the uh, the annoying stally parts, but let's get right into it. All right, so here we are, guys. As you can see, Keegan changed up his team a lot. Well, a lot. He switched out Pinsir for Kartana, and he switched out the Blade for Chansey. Now, he looks at my team, and he sees almost an identical team. I, I see almost the same thing on his side as well, but it turns out he switched up a lot of his sets as well. So, let's get this game started. We're going to go on to normal, and uh, we are going to see the Rotom Heat lead off against the Klefki. Now, I know that I'm forcing this thing out, so I'm just going to go for a Volt Switch. His Rotom Wash comes in. I hit it with a Volt Switch. I do 25%. Okay, very important. This is max HP. It's just it's just max HP Rotom. It's it's probably defensive, right? More than likely. Um, that that Volt Switch damage is perfectly normal. Let me just go out into my Kiram, and uh, let's let's see what we do. As uh, he switches out, I didn't see an item on Rotom. I didn't see leftovers. I'm wondering why. Okay, that's fine. I set up a sub in front of his Chansey. That's, that's cool. I get to uh, go for a Toxic on this turn and test the, test the waters to see if he has Aromatherapy. He's going to go for Seismic Toss. He's not going to break my sub, clearly. If I had Dragon Claw over Ice Beam in this game, guys, uh, I would have been in a great position because I could Toxic both of the Mons that could take on my Kyurem decently well, and I could Earth Power the rest of his team. 
uh, and then just knock them out. So, uh, Kartana can't take a hit on the special side. Uh, Klefki has to be weary of switching into my Earth Powers. Uh, Infernape j doesn't want to take it, and neither does Rotom. And then Chansey and Cresselia, I can Toxic and Dragon Claw down. So, uh, not having Dragon Claw kind of hurt me this, this game. Definitely having Ice Beam instead. But as you guys are going to see right here, uh, I think he's going to throw up a wish on this turn. I'm going to go for the Earth Power just to weaken this. I'm just testing to see if it has what, what it has as, as its full move set. I'm trying to scout for its full move set. Uh, I'm going to go for another uh, another sub on the following turn. I have no reason not to. Uh, he's going to switch out, and I am going to uh, get behind a sub. I can talk to this Cresselia as well. It's not a problem. Like I said, this Kiram can deal with this Crest for the most part, so I'm not too worried. He's going to go for Psy Shock. He's not going to break my sub. So now I see Psy Shock, and in the first game I saw Ice Beam and Moonblast. So this is where I start to notice that he has changed up this team quite a bit. He's adjusted it to beat the team that I brought against him. But I could have changed my team as well, so it was kind of questionable. But anyway, I'm going to move on. Uh, I'm going to go for the Earth Power. going to be able to hit the Crest for a little bit of damage. It's fine. He's going to go for Psy Shock. He's going to weaken. Uh, he's going to break my sub at this point because it's two Psy Shocks. It's obviously going to break my sub. It's Stab. Uh, I'm going to go for another sub. No reason not to. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. Can't help coughing. I have something in my throat. I'm sorry, guys. going to get behind another, another sub. He's going to bring in his Chansey. I'm just going to go for another Toxic. It's fine. Uh, he's going to go for a Wish. I'm um, all right. All right. So now I know this thing has Seismic Toss. Wish. Uh, no, a little bit of a set. I'm gonna go for Earth Power, and here is where he reveals the Aromatherapy. And right here, I'm like, okay. So my Kiram cannot deal with this Chansey as well as I would have initially hoped it could. So I'm gonna have to find another way to deal with it. But for right now, I'm still behind a sub. He still has to go for two Seismic Tosses to break my sub. So let's uh, let's burn a, a few more of his Aromatherapies by going for Toxic. I'm gonna put this on fast because it gets a little bit uh, repetitive here. It's it's a lot of the same. Uh, dance right here. I'm just gonna keep going for toxic because I don't want to attack for no reason waste my PP on my moves But ultimately I shouldn't have gone for toxic. I expected him to switch into Cresselia. I wasted two toxics there very bad idea uh, as he's going to go for a, uh, a Seismic toss break my sub once again. I can just get behind a sub. It's not a big deal You can just go for a toxic here. He predicted me to actually not go for a sub so uh, I mean it it could have worked out for him. He could have ended up toxicing my, my Kirin Black, but I wasn't going to let that happen. No way, shape, or form. He's going to bring in his Cresselia. I'm going to go for Ice Beam. Weaken this thing a little bit. Does 27%. Probably should have gone for that before when I went for Earth Power. Here, I'm going to miss the Toxic. He's going to go for a Moonlight. It's fine. I can just go for another Toxic on the following turn. Try to poison this, but I'm going to miss again. And uh, this is getting quite annoying. He's going to try to break my sub. He's not going to succeed. I am running out of Toxics at this point, guys. And this is not good because he still has a lot of Aromatherapies left. I think he's still sitting on uh, 7. So, at this point, I'm going to switch out into my Delmize. I'm going to take a Psy Shock. It's not a big deal. I'm Leftovers. And I'm forcing out this Cresselia. So, it's all good. He's going to make a switch out into his Klefki. I'm going to go for the Anchor Shot. And I do 50%. Anchor Shot is base 80, guys. With Steelworker, it goes to base 120 because of the, uh, the base, essentially the stab boost. Shadow Claw is base 70. So in my head, I'm thinking, I'm, I've trapped in this Klefki. It can't do too much to me. It's got to have Magnet Rise. It's got to have Flash Cannon. And it's, got, it's probably got Spikes. And I'm thinking, okay, if I Shadow Claw this thing and it lives... I can rapid spin on the following turn as he goes for another spike and clear my, my field of spikes without having to worry about them. So that's what I'm going to go for. I'm going to go for the Shadow Claw. Uh, unfortunately, Shadow Claw gets a super high roll <laughs> and I knock out the Clef Key. So this is actually pretty bad for me because I just wanted to spin kill the Clef Key rather than uh, knocking it out with the Shadow Claw right there. So that was kind of unfortunate. Uh, he's now going to go out into his uh, his Infernape. I cannot stay in on this thing. If this thing goes for Flare Blitz, I am done for. So I'm going to go out into Vaporeon. He is going to go for Stealth Rocks. I'm okay with that. I still have my Spinner around, and I will be able to get off a Spin a little bit later in the game. I'm going to go for a Wish on his Rotom. And here, goes for Volt Switch, does 36%. It's It doesn't have any special attack, guys. It's a defensive Rotom. It, it's, uh, it doesn't have any special attack. It's max HP. This is exactly how much damage this Rotom was doing to me in our first game. It was defensive, so I'm questioning it. 
He's gonna Volt Switch out. He's gonna go into his Chansey. I'm gonna Baton Pass here because I don't necessarily need the health on Vaporeon and I really want to get off this spin. He's gonna go into Chansey. He's not going to... He's actually gonna risk staying in here uh, as I go for a Rapid Spin. And now he's gonna switch out on the Swish. I'm gonna go for the Anchor Shot, make sure this Infernape stays in here. And he's going to go for the, uh, he's gonna get his wish on this turn. I'm gonna go to Rotom Heat on this turn. He goes for a Fire Punch. That is fine by me. I'm still sitting at 87. He goes for another Fire Punch. As I decide to Volt Switch out, get off some damage on this. And I'm gonna go into Vaporeon because I threaten him. Uh, and I'm getting leftovers. This is why I didn't mind my Vaporeon, uh, Baton passing out earlier. Now I'm gonna Baton pass again, predicting him to switch out of his Infernape, not wanting to stay in there. Either to go into his Rotom or to his Chansey, but he actually ends up going into his Kartana. Now I'm focused Sash, a Selgor. A Selgor only does one thing this game. It either kills Kartana or it deals with Cresselia. So... I have no trouble bringing in a Selgor here. Even if he's Choice Scarfed, he knocks me down to my Sash and I get rid of this Kartana, one of his biggest offensive threats. The rest of his team is essentially all defensive from what I've seen. His Infernape is Fire Punch. From the damage on my Rotom, it doesn't seem offensive. It's got Stealth Rocks. His Chansey, we've seen its full set. His Cresselia is more than likely Calm Mind, the same set that he brought against me in, in Game 1, except without Ice Beam, because he needs Moon Blast to hit my Kirim uh, and some of my other Mons. And his Rotom seems to be defensive at this point. So, no problem. Bring in a Selgor. Just gonna go for the Bug Buzz. He is gonna switch out into his Infernape. This takes this super well. This pretty much tells me that he is, like, max HP. I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna go straight into Vaporeon. He's gonna go for the Fire Punch. Uh, he's gonna get a crit on this turn. Doesn't really matter. Honestly, that crit did nothing. Uh, he's gonna go for another Fire Punch. He's gonna do 13 to me. I'm gonna throw up a Wish. And I know that I can live any hit from a defensive Infernape at this point. So, I have no reason not to throw out a Scald right here. I really expected him to just switch out into Rotom and take the Scald and get burned, potentially. Like, it didn't really matter uh, what happened at this point. Uh, but instead, he decides to close combat when it's not even a roll to kill me and uh, gets annihilated by a Scald. So now, one of his two remaining potentially offensive, in quotations, Mons are gone. So he's now going to go out into his Kartana. I'm going to protect on this turn to scout to see if this thing is Scarfed or not. He's going to go for Sacred Sword. I'm not going to see any damage. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out into Delmize because if he is Scarfed, then he's not going to be able to hit me. He has to make a play here. He has to hit Night Slash, which he does, and he crits it. Now, Night Slash is a high crit ratio move. I'm not too upset by that. But what I do see is that this Kartana is Life Orb. So he does not have a Scarfer on his team, right? So, I'm going to now go out into my Acelgor once again. I'm going to threaten this thing out. I'm going to go for a Bug Buzz. He's going to go into his Chansey. That's fine with me. Now, I'm going to go for a knockoff. I'm going to get rid of this thing's Eevee Light, which is extremely important, as you guys will see later. He goes for a Wish. I'm going to start getting up some Spikes, because they're going to help against the Cartana, against this uh, this Chansey as well uh, for later. If he decides to, to keep it in forever, then so be it. But... Uh, he to toxics me. He's now broken my sash. I'm sitting at 95% with a, with a Selgor, guys. Keep that in mind. A Selgor is at 90. It's actually at 94%. Okay. I'm gonna go for a wish with my. Uh, he's gonna go for a wish as I go into Kiram. I'm gonna sub up again. Again, I have no reason not to. He's just gonna click Seismic Toss. That's fine. He's gonna get his wish. Uh, his Toxic Switchins no longer exist. His Klefki is gone. His Kartana doesn't want to take a special attack. He's gonna go for a Seismic Toss. Break my sub. It's fine. Uh, he is eventually going to wear me out of Toxic, so I'm going to get out of here, and I'm going to go into Rotom as he decides to Toxic again, when Sub has always been my play up until now. So I guess he was trying to wear down my Kyurem with my own Subs, which makes sense. So now my Rotom is Poison, so this isn't good. Uh, I really didn't want this thing Poison. I'm going to go for a Volt Switch, and I'm going to go into Kyurem Black again, as he goes for an Aromatherapy, heals off his Poison, that's fine. I can now just go for another sub. Once again, we are on fast. I'm still on fast mode, by the way. I haven't taken it off of fast mode because this is a really long battle. Uh, I'm going to go for Toxic. Miss again. So this is my third miss on Toxic this game. He's going to go for Seismic Toss. Fine with me. I'm going to go for another Toxic. Land this one. Thank goodness. He's going to go for Seismic Toss. That's fine. And now what I'm going to do, uh, this is where it gets a little bit blurry. I go for another sub because I have no reason not to. He's going to go for another Wish. And uh, now I'm going to Ice Beam this thing. Keep it at 31. He's going to go for Roman Therapy. Heal himself up. It's a really long uh, sequence of events between this Kiram and this Chansey. I go for another Toxic. Get him Toxic. He's going to go for a Wish. He's probably going to Seismic Toss on the following turn. So I'm just going to throw out an Ice Beam again. Deal some damage. He's going to go for a Seismic Toss. Not break my sub. He's going to take another round of... Uh, this is the second round of Toxic, so he takes 12. Now I'm going to go for another Ice Beam. 
Uh, if he doesn't aromatherapy on this turn, then we're good. But if he does, I'm, I'm just gaining recovery. Like, I'm gaining back the same amount that I'm losing from sub. But the problem is, I'm running out of toxics at this point. Good news is that I still have toxic on Rotom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Rotom this turn. As he decides to seismic toss me. So I'm okay. It's fine, because his Chansey actually just got back up to full. And as long as he doesn't switch into his Rotom or his Kartana right here, I gain back a lot of health from Pain Splitting. And I don't think he's seeing it coming. So I'm going to go for Pain Split. I haven't revealed it yet. I go back up to 100. He goes for another Toxic, trying to catch my Kiram on the switch back in. Uh, and what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go for Volt Switch, knowing that he has to throw up a Wish or an Aromatherapy, which he does. I'm going to go into Deancey because I calc this, and Mega Deancey's Moonblast does 20 to 24 without an Eviolite, which we knocked off earlier with a Selgor. So I'm going to take my chances. I'm just going to go for a Moonblast. Worst case scenario, he goes for Wish. It's fine. Uh, and I knock him out on the following turn. I'm going to knock him out with Moonblast. So goodbye, Chansey. Don't have to deal with it anymore. Getting up spikes, not ultimately too important, but I'm glad I didn't let my Kyurem get toxic. Anyway, he's going to now go into his Rotom. And I don't want to stay in against this Rotom. It's it's a threat, right? So what am I going to do? I'm going to go to Kyurem Black. He's just going to Volt Switch out. Smart play. Good play on his part. Now he's going to go into Kartana. And uh, I don't want to take a Sacred Sword from this. So I'm going to go into my most expendable Mon at this point, which is Vaporeon. He's going to go for Sacred Sword. Crits that too. It, this one doesn't matter at all. Like, this one does not matter at all. He's going to go for Leaf Blade on the following turn. That is fine with me. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my Deancey, because actually Moonblast kills from here. And uh, I'm going to hit this thing with a Moonblast. It's going to do a lot of damage. And now he's going to go out into his, uh, his Cresselia. And I know that my play on Cresselia every time is to go into Kyurem, uh, because unless this thing has sub... If it's sub, Calm Mind, Moonlight, and Psy Shock, that's uh, a little bit of an odd set because then he cannot touch my Bisharp, uh, which is somewhere in the back uh, on my team, which I could have easily brought, which, if you look at his team, does a ton of work. It absolutely destroys him, especially a special one. Uh, as soon as Infernape goes down, uh, Lucario just runs through him, so uh, it would be a little bit odd if he had sub on this. So I'm just going to go into my Kirim, and he's going to pull a double into his Rotom. Now, remember what I was saying earlier, guys? that this Rotom uh, was max HP, it had no special attack investment. This was phenomenal prep on Fog's part, because not for a second during this game did I think that this Rotom was Choice Scarfed. And he tricks me a Choice Scarfed as I click Substitute. So my play there, no matter what, was always to click Earth Power. Why? Because Already I was under the assumption that Cresselia wasn't a substitute variant. Sub didn't make much sense as well because of a Selgor, and he had already seen that, and he knew that I was packing Bug Buzz, and that goes right through Sub. So that would have been a really bad call on his part. The second he switches back into Cresselia, I just go into Rotom and Toxic it, and I easily win this game. I wear it down by knocking it off and Bug Buzzing it repeatedly. And even if my Kyurem is Scarfed, all I need to do is Toxic the Cress, come back in with Kyurem, start Earth Powering, because as we covered earlier, there's a chance that Moonblast doesn't break my sub from neutral. So even if I'm Choice Scarfed and I'm not behind a sub, a plus one Moonblast from this range right here, 75%, which I would have not been at had I Earth Powered on this turn, but a Moonblast from this range potentially doesn't two-hit KO me. It's, it's actually got a really low chance to two-hit KO me from this range. So, and if I'm at full, it never two it KOs me. So he's toxic. He's taking repeated rounds of toxic and I'm just hitting him with earth powers and he has to continue to moonlight until the point where he just can't anymore and he dies. So I would have pulled out a 3-0 if I would have just earth powered here. But instead I go for sub and this puts me in a really bad spot because now this Rotom has my leftovers. This was like the worst possible scenario. Rotom has my leftovers. I'm behind a sub and I can't do anything but click sub, and I have zero switch-ins to this Rotom on my team. If you look around, uh, my Selgor's at 94, my Deancey's at full, and my Rotom Heat's at 88. He has no reason not to click Hydro Pump here. However, a Selgor is at 94%. No special attack investment. Rotom Wash with a Hydro Pump does 77 max. So if I switch in my Aselgor, I take a round of Toxic, but I get off the necessary Bug Buzz damage on this uh, on this Rotom, 
for Deancey to pick it off with a Moon Blast. So th that would be fine. I can even go back into Kiram after and just f start firing off Earth Powers and execute the exact same game plan that I executed before, that I was talking about before. Just go into Rotom Heat, fire off a Toxic, and we're looking fine. However, I'm going to go into my Acelgore on this turn, and once again, he's going to crit me. So now I'm in the worst possible position. Not necessarily, because I can still go into Kiram and I can still click Earth Power. However, I'm thinking his correct play is to go into Cresselia knowing that I can Earth Power this Rotom. So I'm going to throw out a Toxic now. Worst mistake. Go for a Toxic, he stays in. He goes for Will-O-Wisp, burns me, it doesn't matter, except now I'm getting whittled down by burn. I'm gonna miss the Toxic, it doesn't matter, I'm out of Toxics, guys. That was my last Toxic. What does this mean? I struggle on this turn. So that means that I'm gonna take extra damage from hitting Struggle. I'm gonna do very little to this Rotom because I don't have attack investment and I'm burned. And uh, he's going to knock me out with a combination of burn and the next Hydro Pump. So as you can see, there is absolutely no way that I can bring this game back. Except I changed my Deancey set at the last second, if you remember that. I'm Calm Mind, and he has no special attack investment, and I'm faster than him. So I'm going to get up a Calm Mind before he can hit me with a Hydro Pump. And unless he crits me, there might still be a way for me to bring this back. He's gonna. I'm going to go for a Calm Mind. He's going to go for Hydro Pump. He's going to land another one. He's going to hit me for 67%. That's a that's even less than what I calc for. So I don't know if he was a minus special attack nature or what he was, but anyway. Uh, now he's in range of my Moon Blast. Before he wasn't, so I couldn't even risk it. I had to go for Calm Mind. Now he's easily in range of my Moon Blast. There's no questions asked. I do outspeed this. It no longer has its Scarf. It's getting knocked out. So I'm going to go for Moon Blast. Deancey's going to pick up another kill. As you guys saw, it picked up a kill on Chansey. Picked up a kill on Cortana. Picked up a kill on Rotom. So, I mean, I got three kills. His Cresselia is going to come in. I know that it's Calm Mind, guys. My Moon Blast does a max of 56% to this. After a Calm Mind, he can take the next Moon Blast, and he can just Moonlight it off, and he can heal stall me. Uh, and unless I expertly go out into Rotom Heat and Toxic it, and then switch back into my Deancey on the turn that he doesn't attack me, and then go back into Rotom and Pain Split and all this jazz, I don't think I can win this game. But Mega Deancey is a legend and crits the Moon Blast on the Cresselia as a revenge crit for the Acelgore. So, <laughs> Poke Rob, Rob, he's in the chat right now. I don't know if you, you guys don't see this because I've cut it off. But he is in the chat right now and he's like, Poke Rob about to sweep. <laughs> I love you, Rob. Crits the Cresselia, puts it in range of the next Moon Blast easily, and we are going to take this game 2-0. was a lot closer than it should have been, but Fog had some excellent last-minute prep for our second game, our rematch. Uh, this man is a great player, honestly. He's, uh, he's shown uh, what he can do, and he really caught me off guard with that Trick Rotom. I really wish that I wouldn't have fallen for that and just gone for the Earth Power, because I still had Rotom, and I could still Toxic him. So that was a little bit of a mis uh, a miscalculation on my part. Made the game a lot closer than it should have been. Had to come down to a crit. Uh, ultimately, I could have still gotten an absolute high roll on both Moon Blasts and knocked out the Cresselia, but it would have been really hard. Uh, as well, he had to Calm Mind, uh, and I could Calm Mind, on the, calm mind on the turn that he would go for Moonlight. So it would have kind of been in my favor at that point because I'm doing over a little over 50% to him. Uh, the min roll is like... Uh, 51, I think, uh, on Moon Blast, and then the, ma the max roll is like 58, but anyway, um, ultimately the crit obviously did matter at the end there, but so did the crit on my Selgor, I mean, I would have put him in range of Earth Power, uh, or Moon Blast from Deancey by hitting Bug Buzz, he would have taken a ton from that, because he was not specially defensive investment, not special defense invested, excuse me, uh, so a lot of things went really wonky that game. Uh, but we were able to pull out the win. So your Montreal Habsols advance to a 2-0 record with a plus 4 differential, I want to say. I think we had three. We had three Mons left in the last game. So plus 5 differential. So looking very good. Next week we are taking on the 
uh, Gotham City Golurx, Rob Jr. He's a Poke, uh, Poke TCG Gamer 1288, I think, something like that on Showdown. He's actually really high up on like every ladder. I've seen his name around a lot. Uh, he's passed me a team before in, in the past that performed pretty well. Uh, he's got a monster team, guys. He's got ridiculous wall breakers. Uh, Mega Gardevoir, Terrakion, Hydreigon. Uh, it's going to be really hard to... Crawdont, I didn't even see that. Uh, it's going to be really hard to deal with this team, but uh, hopefully this team can pull it off. It's a team with all my friends on it, honestly, and it, like regardless of the outcome of this season, uh, I'm having a lot of fun uh, with this team, and I'm glad that I, I drafted such an offensive team that also has the capability of somewhat being defensive. Like you saw, our Kieran Black was a little more defensive this week. Uh, Vaporeon was always able to put in work both week one and week two. I'd even got a kill this week, so that made up for the two deaths. Uh, and then uh, Rotom Heat coming as a defensive mon this week. It can also come offensively on other weeks. So uh, if I if it has the matchup, I will definitely bring it. But yeah, that's uh, that's it, guys. If you did enjoy, also uh, sorry I forgot to mention. Make sure to check out Fog down below in the description. I'll also be le leaving a link to every other coach uh, in the NPL miners if you do want to check out their games for this week. All of them should be uploaded today as this is coming out. Make sure to leave a like down below for me. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao.